and let me know when you're ready. Uh, I'm ready. You're ready. Okay. So, everybody, I have a special treat for you. It's Adam, of course, from Lucy Pixel, but I'm not alone today, so you don't have to listen to my boring ass voice. I have a special guest, uh, Anthony Jones, who, of course, needs no introduction, the famous Anthony Jones. <laughs> and I want to open up by saying something really cool, something I found out a couple of years ago. Both oh. of our names are technically AJ. Oh, Did really? You know that? Yes. Because I was talking to my mother the other day, and I, or, or a little while back, and I said uh, I was annoyed about the fact that my name didn't abbreviate. You can't, <laughs> how do you abbreviate Adam? You know, like Jessica, sure. you can call her Jay or Jess or Jesse. Anthony, you can say Tony, I think. Isn't that the Anthony? Yeah, also yeah, Tony, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. But she said, no, that's not true, because your name is Adam James. And I called you that in case you ever wanted to call yourself AJ. And I went, get out. And I thought that was really cool. And I love the idea of being called AJ, but unfortunately, Adam had caught on. I'd been called Adam my whole life, so unfortunately, I never grabbed that wave. But yes, as you can see, neat fact. Now, one of the things I wanted to, I thought we would throw a couple of topics on the, on the burner here. And one of them was, I thought a topic that um, you in particular uh, really could voice in on. Uh, I've, I've heard you speak about this uh, on some of your earlier podcasts and stuff like this, and you offered some really hugely valuable feedback, and that is career-focused artwork, like producing your own stuff for yourself, for fun, versus yes. the stuff that will actually get you a job, right? So being a teacher at Robot Pencil and being somebody who's been teaching for years, um, what do you find as far as art as far as art's concerned? What kind of stuff do you feel is the most marketable for artists? Yeah, so that's a that's a great question. And it's a question that uh, I get asked quite a bit. Uh, and sometimes it's indirect, sometimes it's not so like uh, direct. Mm -hmm. And the advice I usually give to people is that you should pick a studio that you kind of want to work for, right? Mm -hmm. Hypothetically. Yeah. And then and then imagine like what they would want. Yeah. Right? Like imagine walking in the very first day, sitting down at your desk and then doing something. Yeah. And what would that be? Because sometimes people feel that like, you know, when you get a job or whatever, they'll like teach you how to do stuff. Mm -hmm. Um no, not really, right? Like they're expecting you to kind of like, like know what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, they'll probably like they'll probably teach you how to like you know do the emails and the messaging and all this stuff like internally. But, but in terms of the actual art, like no, you got to like know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I always give this advice because it's it's helpful helpful for people to have like a very clear like goal or at least clearer goal. But yeah. then I also accompany that with. Like you might not work there, right? You might not actually get a job there ever. Um, but there are other studios that are emulating that style or that aesthetic that will hire you because you are doing that thing and you're doing yeah. it well. Yeah. Uh, at least hopefully you're doing it well. And then I also accompany all of that with you should also do personal work, like yeah. things that you like, like yeah. has nothing to do with any kind of studio, any kind of like, you know, like marketable skill. It's just like yeah. what you like to draw, like what you like to paint, or whatever you like to design. Yeah. And uh, if it, if it if it's clearly different, like really like bizarre and just like something that is nothing like your commercial work, mm -hmm. then I, I I would actually recommend you reconsider what your commercial work. Yeah. Like yeah. like for instance, let's say you're doing like a lot of like um, uh, like fantasy like realistic fantasy artwork for your your commercial work right yeah but then whenever you do like like your personal work it's always like animation mm -hmm. like super animation stylistic i mean if, if this happens then you clearly are like you know disoriented <laughs> you need yeah. to like you need to like pander to your actual interests more so yeah. so maybe something that you could do that would be more commercial would be like okay we'll look at something like pixar or yeah. DreamWorks or whatever, and then do work that you think they would want. And then you can go back to your style, which could be a little bit more like, you know, uh, has a little bit more grunge to it. Or let's say you, you're, you're a little bit more like, you know, um, brave with your, your personal work. Like you do stuff that you would never see in an animated film, but it's like yeah. clearly styled, if you yeah. know what I'm talking about. A good example is like Alberto Miego. Yeah. Like he... Um, 
he worked on uh, or he like pretty much helped i'm almost certain like do like most of what spider-verse looks like like okay. almost all that is visually probably started from him yeah. and his team that he had and obviously they just kept with it because he had that kind of style in his work for years mm -hmm. but if you look at his personal work it's like very risque you know what i mean like yeah. a lot of like nudity and a lot like really like grunge yeah um yeah. And so that then when The Witness came out for Love, Death, and Robots, which is pretty much his baby, you know, it's like what he wanted. Um, it was kind of funny to see people say, oh, it looks kind of like Spider-Verse. It's like, no, yeah. it's actually the reverse. Uh, it's just that Spider-Verse happens to come out first. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. And But my point is is that that's that's exactly right, though. They, they look similar. There's something uh, tying them all together aesthetically. Um, and there's a reason why, you know, the Sony Pictures or Sony Animation hired an artist like him mm -hmm. to do that aesthetic because they liked it. They wanted something like that. But yeah. at the same time, you know, this is a PG film. They can't go like have like Spider Man with his thing out flying around. <laughs> you, know? you know what? I want to see that. I want to see that. Come I'm on. I'm sure Alberto not... Miego wanted to see that too, you know? Game of Thrones my... gets away with it. Why the hell can't we bring that into animated <laughs> films for kids? I don't see the problem. Yeah. 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 But like, no, but uh... it's a good point. Yeah, so I always say like you know you, you should you should listen to your personal voice. Yeah, uh, and then find what the closest commercial uh, venue would be for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's that's if you want to get a job, right? Like if you want to start working, you, you be practical, be pragmatic. Yeah. Like, and you want to like keep practicing the very thing that you like, right? Yeah. So even if you you are working for the man or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, at least it's like in that aesthetic that you kind of already enjoy. So you're only going to get better at it, right? Yeah. And then uh, because if you like, okay, I have some people who like like to do like more monstrous stuff and more like mm -hmm. serious, realistic art, right? And one of my students, she was telling me like she, you know, she built a commercial portfolio of like mm -hmm. mobile looking art, like mobile games like art. Yeah. You know, very yeah. cutesy, very like bubbly. And um, she didn't want to do that, but she wanted to get a job. So she did yeah. that so she could get the job. And then she got the job. Yeah. And then what? Yeah. <laughs> and then she realized that there was like little to no time to actually get good at the other yeah. stuff that she wanted to. And she only kept on getting better at drawing like this very cutesy, bubbly stuff. Exactly. And so yeah. her portfolio just started building up with this cutesy, adorable, bubbly stuff. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And she realized it was a trap. Like, it was like, oh, no. Like, now I don't have time to really get good at the thing that I wanted to get good at. Yeah. And yeah. and so she obviously, you know, took steps to get out of this. That's why she became one of my students. And I helped mm -hmm. her out with that. And if, ultimately, she was able to leave that job and, and pursue a job that's a little bit closer to what she wanted to actually yeah. do. Yeah. And so... You're basically describing the first third of my career. Looking back, <laughs> I was bottlenecked into animation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And I just, I, as I didn't hate animation, but I got, I wanted to move to different things. It just, my, my natural desire pulled me in a different direction, but I was so recognized for animation style and I had an education yeah. in animation that I kept getting hired. And the more you're hired, the better you get, the more people call you. And it's, yeah. it's a trap. Like you said. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and that's the, the point too, is that I don't want people to think that, um, I'm saying that you you shouldn't like enjoy multiple facets of like the industry because there's definitely going to be multiple facets yeah, of, of stuff yeah. that people like. Like I like animation too, you know. Mm -hmm. But but if the the goal is to to get a job, um, you will get that job, and you may hate it, mm -hmm. or or you may not enjoy it as much, or. It's a it's a grass is greener situation. Yeah, you know, and for those of you who don't understand that expression, it's just like um, it's kind of this idea of like like every time you look inwards of or outwards uh, from some other van or you're looking from a different vantage point, looking inwards to a different situation. For instance, mm -hmm. like I'm a student and I want to work at Blizzard for whatever reason, right? Like, yeah, or, or I want to work at like another big studio, like I don't know, like Riot or. Uh, you know, Sledgehammer Games or any any kind of like larger studio or whatever, right? Or I want to work on the next Game of Thrones or I want to work on this or, you know, any number of I want to do that thing. And once I get there, you know, I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. uh, so the grass or greener idea says is that it looks greener 
the grass looks greener over there. And when you finally get over there, you realize it's just as dull as the grass. <laughs> that Regular you old crackers. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's <laughs> not, yeah, it's nothing. Anything. It's not that much different. I mean, yeah. obviously, getting more money and having you know opportunity to hang out with probably the artists that you admire, yeah. all that stuff is definitely great. But it, 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 it the novelty wears off. It does uh, eventually. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. And it's just yeah. a job. I mean, how many you know artists that have spoken online in podcasts about who've had those dream jobs, working at Disney, working at Pixar, working at DreamWorks, and they always come down to the same thing. It's just another job, you know? Yeah. Uh, the novelty does wear off, and it really comes down to, you know, the company or the, the name of the company itself only is impressive for a short while. And then after that, you know, then what? Right, and you have to make sure that that then what is also fulfilled. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so the 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 point I'm trying to make ultimately is that you know um, whatever you choose, you know, don't choose because you think things are going to get better in mm -hmm. the future. Uh, choose it because that's what you want to do. Yeah, now that's what you think you're going to enjoy, um, and and with with very little regret in mind right like you're you're doing it because you know it's gonna put you in a place that you're gonna feel more comfortable and when yeah. you get there uh plan for what the next step may be you know yeah. and it, it could be more the same you know some some complacency isn't bad in fact mm -hmm. I, I i think complacency and like um, the ability to just be like you know i'm happy with what i got yeah. is actually pretty admi admirable and mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that either but what i what i usually have conflict with is with people that will constantly look outwards of like i don't know there's like there must be something better out there yeah and it's just like i don't know man like i i feel that the best years of my career was when i was trying to have a career mm -hmm. you know what i mean like when i was just yeah. starting out and i was just yep. like a, a nobody i didn't know anything and everything was so fresh and brand new to me mm -hmm. uh, th those to me seem to be the most enjoyable not because like working for these big studios like wrecked me or ruined my um my, my perception of the industry or anything like that no it, it was actually just pretty simple is that uh, i enjoyed the process right i yeah. enjoyed the kind of like the journey of it and you hear that a lot like the journey is more rewarding than like the the finish yeah and uh you know just to get kind of a little bit more like primal about this is like you know i always try to think about because i you know we're animals the way that i see it and mm -hmm. it's like, okay, you know, we just happen to have all these great toys. <laughs> yeah. It's like, imagine if, like, you know, a rhino had like lasers. Like, would that rhino know what to do with it? You know? <laughs> I, love your, what, I love your analogies. They're awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, it's pretty kind of, it's, if you really think about it, it's kind of crazy what we have, you know? And, yeah. um, because yeah. we are just animals, we're not like anything yeah. special. And so it's like, um, so I always try to think of like why certain, like, uh, anxieties and, and feelings come uh, yeah. from our modern society and like how to explain how to get around it by thinking about ourselves as like a, a as a as a creature and so yeah. so you know i was talking to my friend last night actually about this and uh you know he made kind of like a point that like sparked like another kind of analogy i was like oh you know like if you think about when we were primal you know like just like living out in the wilderness doing whatever you know, it made sense that like every day was kind of like a uh, a familiar challenge, yeah. right? Like think about it like, you know, if you were to go hunt or gather food, however you need to do it, it, it wasn't a guarantee every day. Mm -hmm. And so obviously like the ancestors who had this kind of thriving of like, you know, every day is different, but also the same because mm -hmm. you know, we got to do the same thing. We got to go hunt and gather and do all that stuff. Uh, but you never know. Like one day it's all easy, and the next day it's like a, we're running from, you know, a predator. Yeah. And so, so there was this constant like tug of war of like a challenge and a uh, uh, something that's very static, something that's very familiar. Yeah. Yep. And then when you when you take something like art, like when, what we do, uh, there comes a point where it stops becoming challenging, mm -hmm. right? And I don't mean this like that I'm like a master at everything. It's just that like I am proficient at what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty consistent at like drawing the very things that are asked of me, mm -hmm. you know. Um, very, very little things challenge me artistically mm -hmm. in terms of what I do professionally, right? right? Yeah. If uh, Pixar called me and they said, you know, we want you to work on our project, that would challenge me, right? Yeah. Because I don't do that. 
-hmm. But, you know, if someone asked me to draw, like, a tumor monster, like, that's no challenge. I do that all the time. I do that for free for myself, you know, all the time. And so so when that happens to you, uh, whether it's, like, through art or, like, say, the more obvious stuff that people usually see this happen with, like, a mundane, like, paperwork type job, like an office job, right? Uh, that really kind of tears a, tears at the primal part of us, which is yeah, that very we much, also yeah. do we also do need something that has some sense of conflict, uh, not so much so, uh, but enough that makes us feel that the day by day is is a little interesting. Yeah, and so I also like think that it's important to understand that because there's like you know the advice I gave about like you know focusing and getting good, and eventually you're just going to become you're going to get become jaded potentially because you're going to get really good at it. Yeah. You know, getting really good at art is inevitable if you're doing it every day, constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a matter of time, and not even that much time. Like, maybe like yeah. 10, 10 years at the most, you yeah. probably will be highly proficient yeah. at whatever it is that you do. Uh, I, could say, I could say even less time than that, to be honest. Yep. And if you live to like 80 or 90, even if you, you're unlucky, you only live up to like 60 or 70 for whatever reason. That's yeah. still like not that much time out of your life. Yeah. to get really good at something. And so so I also encourage people to to understand that this is probably going to happen and to pick another hobby, like do something else, like mm-hmm. understand that there's like uh that primal urge that you need to satisfy. Yeah. Right? And if you do that and you pick like a thing that like has nothing to do about like getting really good at it, like you uh-huh. know for instance like uh I think like you know exercise is a good example of this. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can never, you, you can never always be awesome at exercise. Like exercise will always still be hard. It's never yeah. going to be like, that's the whole idea. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not like you can le- like, um, keep on lifting like 500 pounds easily. Like that's yeah. always going to be hard every time you do it. You, yeah. Maybe you can do it, but it's going to always be really hard mm-hmm. every time. And so, uh, something about that I think is really, uh, is really what, you know, the human condition needs It needs something. Yeah. Yeah, it needs something that will do that. And so don't ever put it all on your art is what I'm getting yeah. at. Because that is something that like I, I really believe people can get really good at. Yeah. And and then it will become that mundane task, even though it doesn't seem like it should be, right? It should yeah. be like this creative, like constantly adventurous thing. Um, no, eventually you'll get really good at it. And so yeah. the only way is to find it uh find that challenge is to completely change the genre of art you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, to try to do some, like a completely other creative thing, yeah. you know, like to pick something else, um, and prepare for that, you know. And that would be my advice, generally speaking. <laughs> like yeah. when people are like to try to have that foresight of like, okay, yes, of course, try to get a job, build a portfolio, but also be prepared that this is going to become like you were just saying too. Is it's going to become a job? It's a job. And, yeah. Can you and, sustain that? Yeah. Yeah, and it's nice to think that you know. You know, what you do for a living is something that is fun and enjoyable, mm-hmm. ultimately. Yeah. Um, but but it, it, it is a job. So, for instance, like, uh, I did some work for something that I can see that a lot of my peers are really already upset about, which was the Sonic movie, right? Okay. Like, the Sonic the Hitchcock movie is coming out. And I guess some of the first images came out. And okay. people were like, what the hell? And, <laughs> you, know, they, you know, everybody has an opinion. Yeah. And, and I usually try to reserve my opinion after I've seen the film. Right. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I saw some of the images and yeah, I, I would have some criticism as, as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, you know, it's it's not that big of a deal, you yeah. know. And uh, but it, it kind of rem- reminds me that, like, you know, this is a job that I do. Like if someone asked me, hey, you know, AJ, can you work on this thing for us for this movie? And I'm like, yes, I totally can, you yeah. know, and I do it and then they pay me and then it's it's done and did, you yeah. know, and then uh and sometimes people don't like recognize that that's that's the gig. Like we have a mm-hmm. job, and you may be very critical of these these movies because you're probably not working on them or mm-hmm. these projects. And then when people start to become critical of the very projects you're working on, it's like, how oh, dare you? Don't understand how how the industry is. And it's just yeah. like, yeah, I think it's just best to always just feel this way until the 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 project comes out, because uh, I mean. You take a movie like the Lego movie, for instance, like who would have mm-hmm. thought that, that was amazing, right? Yeah. And it was. Uh, I mean, even with the new Spider-Man movie, yeah, I remember seeing the spider pig or spider ham, yeah. right? And I remember thinking like to myself, oh man, 
that's going to be a real challenge to sell <laughs> sell that. Yeah. You know, in my mind, yeah. I was thinking that. I didn't say it out loud. I didn't go like I didn't open up a Reddit thread and just start like blasting. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, I was just like, okay, like I'm really interested to see how they solve this creatively, uh, yeah. and they did a great job. Uh, yeah. It's probably one of my favorite movies, uh, not just like animated films, it was favorite movie all time. Yeah, yeah, just like favorite movies, like my top mm-hmm. five. And but my point is, is that like you know, it's a job though, right? Like yeah. someone's Absolutely. job was to make Spider Ham look dope or feel good in the context of the film. Yep. And whether our opinion matters or not, you know. It, it, it's really important as a designer to try to think about that. Like, you know, we, we don't want to have our opinions drive um, objective design choices, you know? Yeah. And so, so yeah, sorry to, to kind of get back on topic. Like, no, you're, I, you're kind of hitting on several of the topics I wanted to talk about. So you're kind of, it's, it's going to finesse into a nice transition coming um, soon, but you're hitting on a lot of big stuff. One of the things that, that I think you're hitting on that really resonates with me too is, the sustainability side of things, it's, um, and I've, I've spoken about this at length on my own channel n- numerous times, and I hear this from a lot of other people where you, you probably hear this from students all the time too, the feeling of, I, I really had a hard time this week, I didn't feel motivated this week, or, or people just messaging you in person and saying, how do you stay motivated? How do you keep, keep producing work every day type of idea? Totally. And a lot of that plays into two things you said. The first is, um, it's not your be all end all. If you treat, uh, imagine like somebody saying this chocolate bar is going to be the only chocolate bar you eat for the rest of your life. It might taste great for a little while, but then after a while you're going to get really sick of it. So you need to expand on that concept and build into different things. And that might not necessarily be, and very often isn't specifically the act of producing artwork. Sometimes it's like me, you know, picking up the drums or going to the gym or, you know, picking or learning how to cook or something like that. Photography, good examples, photography. And, and you get into these different professions for the simple act of, like you said before, um, feeding your, that part of your brain, that mammalian part of your brain that needs to experience newness, something new, something fresh. And what that does is it doesn't only fuel new knowledge, but it also helps to expand your brain in general, which feeds into your art, right? So it yeah, totally doing uh, extracurricular things actually feeds your passion for art indirectly, just on based on what it does for the health of your brain in general. And um, that's I, I don't think I if art was all I did, if painting was all I did, I don't think I'd be able to survive for a long. I think I would get so sick of it at a certain point I would butcher my own career on purpose for the sake of being able to do something else. Um, but I love doing art for that, for that one fact. But the other one is because, um, I made a point, I made, uh, uh, a decision in my career at a certain point that I had to stop chasing after the popular job for the sake of chasing after the popular job. I want to work at Blizzard. I want to work at Disney. I want to work at Riot abandon that and look more inward and like the oracle says know thyself right yeah. analyze yourself directly and say what when when nobody's watching when i'm alone at home and the and the lights are out what do i like doing and shut up yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i know i know there's a lot of <laughs> dirty minds out there going well no that's not what i mean when you're alone when you're no, home that's alone, exactly what you mean is, okay yes, it does. but after <laughs> you're done jesus okay pg rating christian channel here um <laughs> Once, you know, not once, because we don't do that because we're, we're good people. Um, uh, when you are left to your own devices, what do you do? When you're just, when, you, when, you're, when you're sitting home alone and you got Netflix sitting next to you, what movie do you grab to watch? What do you get, what excites you mentally, emotionally? And pay attention, listen to that part of your brain. And at a certain point in my career it, that I had to do that because I'd kind of, like you said, the novelty of working for the big studio, I, I achieved that. I had that experience. And at a certain point, I was sitting there going, well, now what? And I realized at that point, if I want to continue for the next, even just for the short distance future, like 10 years or 15 years into the future, can I picture myself doing what I'm doing right now for that long? And even that was a bit of a stretch for me. But imagine doing that for the rest of your life. Forget it. You know, like I, I can't. I would, I would, I would be, I would get sick of it very quickly. So I had to start looking inwards and say, what do I really love? Where's my passion? And how can I, 
how can I market my passion? How can I work what I love into the type of career I'd like to have? And I started to direct it from the inward out rather than just trying to, uh, to change myself or to reinvent myself for different studios. And I don't know about you, Anthony, but for me, it really, that really was the turning point in my career. I found that really, things really, even though I felt I was taking a big risk, that's where things really started to turn around for me. That's where I started to feel like where people started calling me for work, <laughs> where I was yeah, yeah. like, you know, soliciting myself all over the city and being ignored, just wasteful CVs floating around all over the place where all of a sudden people are saying, Hey, Adam, I love your work. Would you be interested in working on this? And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. You know, and yeah, did you ever find that experience in your own life? Yeah, so like when I started to do my own personal work, uh, I think that that definitely became more of what people know me for. Yeah. And so, and so like, yeah, I think it, it comes to a point where, and it, it goes back to the original premise, right? Like if the more you do something, the better you're going to get at it. Yeah. And so what I... What I ended up hap what ended up happening was that I just got really good um, mm -hmm. over time, yeah. And I just never stopped kind of posting my artwork, you know, putting it out there. Uh, I kept on talking to people, making friends from all all over the place, yeah. And you know, it, it's starting to turn to the point where people, like just like you said, are starting to get a hold of me, right? Yeah. And I and it goes back to this this idea. Of like, don't just try to get a job. Try to be good, good at art, you know. Yeah, yeah. And and be good at art the way that you want to be good at it. Mm -hmm. And all the advice I gave earlier was not just only for that. It was also like to keep in mind because eventually you are going to get good at that, and you want to yeah. like be in a space where you feel more comfortable. Because because you don't, you don't want to be in the other spot of like just getting work and just constantly like chasing ambition. Yeah, uh, you want to be in a position like you were kind of getting at, which is that you want to just be able to make things uh, that you enjoy. You're not so worried about like trying to get those big jobs, um, and then and then ironically, some of those big jobs will start coming to you. You know, because uh, especially if you do a good job of like making your artwork stand out and yeah. you keep marketing yourself. Yeah, uh, you have to have you kind of have to do both. It's really yeah. hard to do just one over the other. Um, and, and then, yeah, people will, will find you and they will seek you out and ask you questions and, and, and potentially give you jobs. Yeah. I, I always recommend that people do what they want because yeah. it's just, it's just, you're going to be doing a lot, a lot of it mm -hmm. all the time. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like, it's kind of dangerous to just get the work, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, m another piece of advice that I would give uh, to touch upon something that you talked about earlier about like mm -hmm. motivation, you know, yeah. you, 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 you talked about how some people would reach out to you uh, or reach out to us in general, like say, hey, you know, how do you stay motivated? How do you stay disciplined yeah. and all this yeah. good stuff? And, and the catch is, is that, especially with motivation and inspiration, the catch is that you shouldn't rely on those two things because they're incredibly fickle. Um, yeah. This idea of staying motivated uh, and this idea of staying inspired, uh, it, it sends the wrong message uh, entirely. Because yeah. what those messages are trying to say is that it should be fun, right? Mm -hmm. It should be enjoyable. Like, how do I come, like wake up in the morning and just be like, all right, time to tackle the next challenge of the day, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And and the reality is the difference between like myself and those who may not achieve these goals that they have in their minds Mm -hmm. is that I do stuff regardless of how I feel. Yeah. Um, there are things that I really care about, and if I care about them, I just do them. Yeah. And the whole how do I stay motivated part, and like like I used to teach people how to stay motivated. Yeah. And as time went on, I realized, no, that's the wrong way. Like I need to teach this differently. Okay. Um, and and I, I I evolve my teaching based off of what I see happen and what I realize is going on in myself and in others, right? And this is one of those examples of like, you know, like trying to trying to convince somebody to stay positive and like forward thinking is really challenging yeah. because some days you just don't want to feel like doing it. So yeah. the the reality is that 
you know, the difference between me and those, those folks usually is just that one thing. Mm -hmm. And, and I try to tell my students this and I try to tell people in general this because, because then it's way more approachable. Yeah. It's, it's way more, um, relatable too, right? Like yep. if I tell you that, yeah, I sometimes don't feel like drawing, yep. but I do it anyway. And then it's like, well, how do you, how do you just do it? And it's like, well, I have the hindsight of knowing that whenever I didn't do that in the past, I collected like debt. Yeah. And this debt is like an art debt or like an emotional debt that I'm mm -hmm. going to have to pay later. Yeah. And that, and like I said, it's hindsight because this has already happened to me. I've realized that I had to pay for my crimes essentially, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and I, I like, so let me give you a good example of this. So let's say you want to be a concept artist, right? And so you're okay, I'm going to be a concept artist. I just heard this great podcast with uh, AJ and AJ. Oh, shoot. <laughs> and then, um, and then like, I realized that like, I need to start drawing. So I'm going to start drawing, you know, I'm super yeah. inspired. I'm super motivated. I start drawing. But after like, let's say a week of doing that, you start to kind of like not be into it anymore, right? You just feel yeah. a little tired. You feel overwhelmed. You feel like, oh man, I'm putting too much time into this or I'm just like not getting it. Whatever, <laughs> whatever the reason, something's going to get in your way, right? Yeah. And you just stop and maybe you do something else. And then you get back to doing the thing maybe again, like here and there. And then, you know, like a year goes by of like just doing a little bit of a here and there type of thing. Yeah. And you, let's say, hear another podcast that really motivates you, whatever inspires you. And then you say, okay, time to do it again. But then yeah. you look at your work and think to yourself, yeah, but the last time I said this, like I barely got anywhere. And so you try again, but you, again, you do this like off and on thing. And let's say you do this for like two or three years, maybe five years even. You start to look at the body of your efforts and it's yeah. like not there. It just mm -hmm. isn't there. So guess what? That's when you start to pay. Yeah. You start to pay with uh, anxiety. You start to pay yeah. with depression. You start to pay it with low self-esteem. You start mm -hmm. to pay it with um, uh, doubts. Yeah. Uh, all of this stuff is what the cost is yeah. for not investing throughout the whole time. Yeah. Now, let's take that same scenario of like listening to this podcast, AJ and AJ. Right. <laughs> right. And, 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 and getting... Reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and getting inspired and motivated and yeah. then hearing the part of this part of the podcast where I'm like, hey, like do it every day, bro, you know, yeah. and that person hears that and say, okay, I guess I just got to do it every day. AJ mm -hmm. says, it doesn't matter if you don't feel good about it. And so they just say, okay, I, I take that very seriously. Yeah, and they do it. So they wake yeah. up one morning and like, again, the first week or two, like super motivated. And then they get to that same point that the other person got to where they're like, oh, man, I don't know. I don't feel it. Yeah, They have that same moment. And they feel that same way, but one difference is that they say, although I hate it, and although everything I'm drawing today sucks, I'm yep. still going to put in the two, three hours I told myself I was going to yep. put in minimum. I have to do it. Yeah. And they do it, and that's like the whole fucking process is just garbage. Like, they just hate every minute of it, right? Yeah. But they do it anyway. And then the next day, it's the same thing. It's like more, more of the same, right? Mm -hmm. And then maybe the third day, they say, okay, I need to do something different. Clearly, this is not working. Yeah. So let me look at some different references or let me watch some more videos. Yep. But the catch is no matter how I feel, I'm still putting that two to three hours in minimum that I told myself I was going to do. Right. Yep. Um, but this time they're trying to find a solution maybe to mm -hmm. the problems that they're running into because they yep. don't like this bad feeling. So they're like, okay, I have to do something different because I still have to put in that time. Yeah. You see what's happening here is that yep. in the alternative situation, this person recognizes that this is a struggle and it sucks. And instead of saying, well, you know, I just don't feel it today. I'll just try it another day. They'll say, I got to do something because I don't like to make feeling. the best of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just got to make the best of it. Exactly. Yep. That's a great way of thinking about it. And now you say a year later, that person has done the thing. They listen to podcasts again. They have vindication because they look at their year's worth of work and they're like, yeah, man, this is definitely working out, mm -hmm. you know? And they listen to AJ and AJ podcast again for whatever reason. You go. Year, year from now, right? Yeah. And then we talk about the same things and whatever. And they're like, yep, yeah, it's totally true. And then they do it again for like another two, three years. And now let's say the five year mark comes for this person, mm -hmm. this alternate universe person of they yeah. just did like pretty much every other, every day. Maybe there was like a weekend or two or a holiday. They didn't do it. But, but their habit was there, like of doing it every day. 
five years of doing something like this every day, especially when they were like finding solutions to problems yeah. and like being proactive about like getting out of these funks, you know, that person most likely will have no debt to pay. In fact, they will have uh, dividends now, mm -hmm. right? They will have money coming in for their efforts because now they are a, uh, a five years, especially they're probably going to be a good artist yeah. or a good concept artist uh, already working probably two years ago and yeah. their, their efforts that they put in for those three years. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at whenever yeah. I tell people like, you don't want to like, um, you don't want to acquire that debt, right? Yeah. Cause it comes back and eventually, and you're gonna have to pay it. And like the way that you pay it is not good. Yeah. And, and for those of you who are wondering, well, what if I already have like that enormous amount of debt, right? Well, the, the, the solution is still the same. And unlike, you know, like maybe like crippling student debt, right, where it grows interest, this, yeah. is, this is much different. Like yeah. if you just for whatever, let's say you put like five years and you have the, mm -hmm. the artist debt that I'm talking about. Well, then today is the day to stop collecting more debt. Yeah. So today is the day to pay it off, yeah. you know. And the way you have to pay it, either through depression or anxiety and all this sad stuff, or by putting time in now, finally, yeah. and doing the work. Yeah. And then, yeah, maybe you have a later start. Maybe you just got this advice now, and it's just hitting you, and it's just finally resonating with you. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like It's still going to help you out. Yeah. And some people are going to join the industry at a much, much older age, and some are going to do it like, really young. Don't focus on that. You yeah. know, Focus on where you're at. Understand that there was a mistake that has been made of whether it was like, you know, ment mentally or mm -hmm. personal, whatever. It's fine. But now the now is the day to start to fix this problem. Right. Yeah. yeah. And and I think if you have this attitude, it will actually get you past all the other stuff. Like we were talking mm -hmm. about, like, you know, being jaded or feeling like chasing the big jobs. You yeah. will you will build a habit that will get you out of the next big funk. Like let's say yeah. it is that whole feeling of like, I don't feel that I'm like accomplishing the things that I want to do. Well, mm -hmm. I know what to do. I just need to start doing them. Yeah. And so, like I said, the hindsight for me uh, is very clear. And yeah. so I've gotten really good at this now. And so I learned how like to do programming for instance yeah. in like two, almost three years now. Yeah. And now I'm just straight at making video games, learning how to do it. That's crazy. Uh, because I can, and I spend like li between three to four hours, uh, like on the maximum every day, maybe between an hour, two hours every day. Yeah. And that's not a lot of time, but it's enough. I'm investing into this and potentially three to four years from now, I will have a video game. It may be successful and that will just pay dividends back to me. If it's yeah. not successful, I will learn a lot about why it wasn't. I will have knowledge that I would have otherwise never had if I didn't make a game in the first place. Yep. And now I have the knowledge. I try again, you yep. know, and yep. then another, like in, in another two or three years, do it again. By the time I'm in my, my fifties, there's a good chance that I will have a, a really good hit, yep. you know, or, a, or a system that will sell to a very niche audience, yep. whatever the solution may be, I'll, it will eventually pay out, yep. you know? Um, but it just takes time, and it, it's like I'm pre prepared for those days where, like, no, nah, it's complete failure, or this, it's like, ah, oh, it's completely, um, I wasted a lot of time on this one specific aspect of design, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but the best way to learn it is to go through it in a lot of yep. ways, right? And I'll tell you something, you... too. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but uh, yeah, I've been talking I've a lot also, no, no, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears, I'm enjoying this, but uh, <laughs> just to throw it in, I have, even if, Hypothetically speaking, even if you know you you made one sale and that was your mom, right? Your mom bought it and that was it. Um, I've seen, I've watched the evolution of your art, and I've seen how much you integrate the technology into your artwork. So one way or another, your art and your motivation is benefiting from this new technology that you've that you've become familiar with, right? I see how you play with it, and that that in and of itself is a reward right there. Yeah, and. Like, again, like I want to kind of make make clear, and this is going back specifically to the motivation and inspiration statement, right? Mm -hmm. um, like, I want to make it 100% clear that motivation and inspiration are incredibly powerful, Yeah. right? But I always like to think of it as, okay, imagine that your passion is just like a, a, a raging fire. Mm -hmm. And so if the fire's base state is just embers, you know? Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. like it's not raging at all. Motivation and inspiration, what it does is just throws like dynamite into that, right? Yeah. And it burns wildly yeah. for like a few minutes and, and then, then it, it goes... starts to go back down. Yeah. And so the, the question isn't a matter of uh, like, because that does exist. Like if you go to a con or event, you get super pumped. Like, mm-hmm. I feel it all the time whenever it happens to me. Yeah. It's that when you go back to your desk and you're back at it after the, like after a week or two of going to that amazing event or Mm -hmm. listening to that amazing podcast or whatever it was. Right. And so I always encourage you should, you should focus more on making that, that base state. (laughs) Like even if it's not a raging fire, just like a, something more than just embers, you know, Mm -hmm. something that if it's just like a constant, like you have like at least one log on the, on the fire every day, you know, it's not a, it's not a raging fire or whatever, but it's like, at least it's burning. Yeah. And I always like to think of it like this. Like if you put like, let's say three hours every day. Uh, So if you do that for like five days out of the week, that's 15 hours, right? Mm -hmm. If you do it for every day, like literally every day, seven days out of the week, that's 21 hours of work a week. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of time to put into something, but three hours a day doesn't seem as much, right? Like an hour in the morning, hour in the middle of the day, yeah. hour at night, right? It's not that big of a deal, actually. But if you think of it collectively, it's 21 hours. So what yeah. ends up happening instead is that people will, let's say, not work on Monday mm-hmm. or Tuesday or Wednesday. But then on Thursday, they're like, oh, my gosh, I need to do something. So they put like a lot of time in. They put like eight hours maybe that day. Mm-hmm. The next day, they're burnt out. So they need they put like five or six hours into that day. Mm-hmm. And then the weekend, they just take off, Right. Yeah. So if you think about like, oh, yes, collectively that one day they put more time than they did in every other single day. Right. Like Mm -hmm. the three hour system. But if you add it up, right, if you do like the eight plus five, what is that, like 13 hours total? Mm -hmm. Yep. Or let's say you did it six hours. Let's say they did one artist asking another artist a math question. (laughs) This is not going to happen. No, no, no. Like, yeah. yeah, Like imagine if they did two (laughs) eight hour days in a row. Right. Like eight, eight. Right. Because they were trying to make up for the time loss on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Right. So, but Thursday, Friday, they're making it all up. So 16 hours of time that they invested total. And then again, they were burnt out because they worked like long ass days. So then the weekend, they don't do anything. This this is common. I'm I'm sure everyone who's listening is like, yeah, I've done this. Where you wait to the last minute to kind of do everything, right? Right. Now do the math, right? Like eight, uh, the 16 hours is less than the 21 hours. Yep. Right. And even if you took the weekends off, remember we said that it would still be 15 hours. Mm-hmm. And so think about that. Like, okay, well, 15 hours versus 16 hours. Sure, you got one hour more doing like the bum rushing it, mm-hmm. but you're you're way more stressed. Yeah, and it's there, not there's all definitely the yeah. yeah, and there was definitely some diminishing returns. Yeah. You know, oh, of course. Yeah. And so so clearly if we just think about the consecutive process versus just like the bum rushing it process, consecutive is way more sustainable. Yeah. And in the long run, it's actually collectively more hours put in. Because yeah. if you were to like this is just like in a week. So let's add a, a month to that. Mm-hmm. Right. Now that's you're gonna have like like Dozens more hours time invested if you did consecutive work versus the bum rushing approach. Because yeah. let, let's be honest, there'd be weeks sometimes that people won't do anything on, yeah. a, on a thing. Where if you're doing it three hours every day, it's mandatory. That adds up. Yeah, that adds up quick. Yeah. and so, and I say three hours minimum because uh, there, there's some pretty good research to show that yeah, about like fifteen to twenty hours investment a, a week in something will lead to some really good results within a really? year. Yeah. Within a really? year, not even like a long time, like not like oh, five or yeah. 10 years. Absolutely. Yeah, within a year. The problem is that most people aren't consistent. That's the problem. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's always, there's multiple reasons for it. Uh, for instance, like we were talking about like motivation, lack of motivation and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, just, just remember whoever's listening to this, that when you start to procrastinate and become lazy, uh, don't take it personal that this is what you are. It's it's a symptom of uh, fear. It's a it's a fear of getting challenged in ways yeah. that you don't like. Yeah. And so it's when you procrastinate and when you start to avoid things, it is a fear of facing reality. You know what? And, I would actually I would add to that. Yeah, I would it. say it's a, even more. It's it's. Not only, well, the fear is a result, but I would also say that it's a lot more biological 
this is actually, I would say this is more hormonal than you might think. Think about, you, you used this analogy the other day of going to the gym, right? Uh-huh. If you go, oh, okay, I'll go to the gym now and maybe tomorrow and blah, blah, blah. You don't really make a set schedule out of it. You're not going to last very long. But if to you, for you, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, before 10 a.m., you're at the gym, you're done. Even if it's those three days, it becomes a habit. Your, your body biologically adapts to the habit and your body biologically feeds your brain and body what it needs to prepare for that schedule. So when, when 10, 10 a.m. hits, you're... Yeah, by, by the time 10 a.m. has come and gone and you haven't gone to the gym, your body feels a depletion from that because you were expect your body was expecting to work out. You feel like shit. Mm-hmm. You get the, you know, I didn't go to the gym. You get that uh, that that lack of workout guilt feeling. Same yeah, thing totally. applies to art. If you your brain consumes a lot of calories and if you train it, if you train it on a daily basis that between this time and this time you mentioned during the podcast that we did together uh, a few weeks ago. Thank you for that, by the way. Everybody go check <laughs> yeah. it out on Anthony's channel. Um, you, you had mentioned the consistency of it. And you're teaching your brain to pump a certain number, a certain amount of energy and hormone into your brain in order for you to function and learn better and perform better during that period. And if you don't, you'll sit around twiddling your fingers. You won't know what to do with yourself. You won't feel the desire to go and play a video game or the desire to do something else because you your body is biologically ready to draw at that particular time and i really str- strictly b- believe in that you can train your body to do that yeah i i agree and yep. so uh yeah that definitely adds to what i'm getting at right because yep. because if you think about like what you just said about like training and getting into the habit of it mm-hmm. um you remove the fear right yep. because now your 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 body is used to it right you're yep. you're it's like when you um it's like when you put your toe into cold water, right? Like, you're, oh, I don't want to jump in, you know? Yeah. And then when you start to put yourself in slowly and, and like, carefully, it's like, oh, no, it's, like, really, <laughs> it's really, really upsetting. Yeah. But if you just, like, jump in um, and your body's like, okay, we're in water. Like, it what adapts are we gonna do right about? away. Yeah, yeah, what are we going to do about it? Oh, well, we have to adapt, you know? Yeah. And so so that that is kind of what I'm getting at is that, like, if you just kind of, like, metaphorically keep jumping in to mm-hmm. the pool of art and what in this case it means just putting the three hours in right yep. um your body will eventually just adjust and then it will be the thing where you don't even mind like even walking in slowly yep. because your body is adapted analogy, yeah. Yeah, yeah your body has adapted entirely to like colder water yeah but uh, of course at first it's gonna be it's gonna be rough right yep. and and I always think that like people have to understand that your brain is running the show mm-hmm. and it's doing a lot of things that you're not even aware of. That's the whole point yeah. uh, of our brain It's why it's so freaking uh, epic is because it is functionally doing tons of stuff mm-hmm. that we're constantly not even aware of. Yeah. Uh, for instance, like, could you imagine that you had like, con- you would have to consciously think about pumping your heart to yeah. like pump the, like pump the blood throughout your body and like yeah. constantly actually like consciously be aware of like uh your nervous system and how it's yeah. working and like consciously be aware of whenever you're picking something up or mm-hmm. when you're walking or when you're like touching stuff like consciously always think about how every finger and how every muscle in your body has to contract Crazy to do a very things, thing yeah. Yeah. no we don't we don't do that right we don't think of every little thing we our, our our conscious mind is usually focused on very shallow pieces of information yeah uh where uh, the like our subconscious brain is doing tons of stuff yeah and our subconscious brain is just a better persuader it's really got good at persuading us to get out of stuff right yeah and it makes sense like on a like again like on a primal level like you know if you're the monkey swinging from tree to tree and you're trying to reach a branch that looks a little bit sketchy mm-hmm. and you're the, you were the the ape that was like nah you know what i can go i can grab that yeah no problem you know uh, and you grab it, it breaks, and you fall to your death, right? You're not going to be passing that seed, are you? You know? Nope. And so then, um, or like, think about like early humans, like there'll be like the ones where, like, you know what? This tribe that we've created, this community, and this like sustainable lifestyle that we've made in the in this wild like jungle, nah, F it. I'm going to walk out into the middle of nowhere <laughs> and just like start my own like life, you know? And he walks out and gets eaten by a jaguar, right? Yeah. And so it's like, th- those people didn't get to pass the seed either, did they? And yeah. so... So there's there's some real uh, merits to like insecurity, uh, jealousy, uh, to like why we have it, why it's yeah. like 
built into our bones and it's really part of being a human and yeah. being be ashamed that you have these these feelings of jealousy these feelings of uh, insecurity uh these these types of feelings being like like you know afraid that you because you have them like you you're messed up yeah. no everybody has it everybody yeah. has these feelings everybody feels this way uh we are all humans some people don't some people are you know are just built differently mm-hmm. and so so once you understand that this is true um then it's about learning how to manage it and mm-hmm. learning how to to understand that that's what's going on understand that it is that hey listen brain i get it you're trying to keep me safe like you're kind of like a overbearing parent yeah right you're trying to keep me safe from dangers but this isn't a tiger mm-hmm. this is just me trying to learn anatomy yeah like like this this is okay like we're yeah. not going to die and the brain's it like i don't know crazy, man but you're spot on yeah, yeah absolutely like, <laughs> your brain's like nah bro let's get out yeah. of here let's yeah. go do something else it's like no listen i i get it but trust me if we can just do this and stick with me on this yeah. you know um you know, we'll, we'll be okay. Your brain might not want to. Your brain yeah. will be like, oh, I don't want to do it. What are you doing? Yeah. You're going to get eaten by the, the painting. It's like, no, this, this is not going to kill us. <laughs> trust, trust me. And and if you have Artist a hard finish. time doing that, yeah, yeah, if you have a hard time doing that, then then again, manage it. Like so, yeah. so maybe you can't put three hours in straight away. Then do an hour. Or maybe break up those three hours in half an hour segments. You know? Yeah. Do, do something that will help you train and going back to what you were talking about, like with the going to the gym every day, right? Mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. do do something that you personally, maybe some people have way more resolve so they can just yep. jump right into like five hours a day and do it consistently every day for like seven years. Okay. Yep. Don't think about those people. Maybe you're the person that needs to take 30 minute breaks mm-hmm. every like you got to like do 30 minutes and then take a break for another 30 yep. minutes and do another 30 minutes. Maybe that's just who you are, yep. you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. I've met, thousands of artists who learn all sorts of different ways Mm -hmm. you know so there's a there's a way for you and so again that whole jealousy thing kicks into and it it, it, it's a great uh tool if you were like amongst like a a a litter of like seven people in your family Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. and your mom's like giving attention to one of the kids and you're not getting that attention so being jealous and whining and throwing a tantrum is a great like hey mom don't forget about me Thing, yep. you know it, it isn't so useful when you grow up and you live in like uh you know the modern society that we live in yeah where uh, attention is constantly being being um mismanaged through like social networks yeah through like likes and dislikes through comments it, it's it's clearly it's yeah. yeah it's, it's a clearly impact. it's clearly detrimental to your growth if that yeah. is something you still have it's a very adolescent and I'm not trying to insult if you feel this way. I'm no. just saying that that's what it is, right? And so if you understand that, you can you can manage it. You can start yeah. to realize, okay, why am I constantly trying to belittle others? Yeah. Or why am I constantly talking about how, oh, because they, they do a, uh, this specific way, that's not a real thing. I wish everybody can just, like, it's unfair, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. like, why am I thinking this way? Um, and is it actually helpful to me? To think this way, and if it yeah. isn't, then you know maybe I should reconsider. Rewrite so good ex- script, yeah, yeah. Be, yeah. Like some good examples of being critical, like for instance, let's say, like for your own, uh, like you see other artists that do a design that maybe you disapprove of, right? right? And so I think that's fine, but then maybe you say to yourself, okay, I have this critical opinion. Uh, it's not necessarily rooted in jealousy or any of this stuff, but I do feel critical. Maybe I can find a solution to do it through my work to yeah. show people what I'm talking about, and you might find a, you might find out that you're wrong, mm-hmm. or you might find out that you're right, and everybody's like, "Oh my gosh, this yeah. this is exactly the the type of stuff that we need to see," you yeah. know. But but my point is is that a lot of those like impulses are very primal, and there's nothing wrong with having that in your life now and yeah. recognizing it later, like recognizing it. Oh, you know what? Like this is definitely not helpful to me i mm-hmm. need to reconsider my strategy of my own yeah. personal growth and 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 accept that it might not be easy to just get over it and yeah. once you can kind of put this position of like okay i have these flaws and uh so does everybody else mm-hmm. and it seems to me that most people who seem to do pe- pretty well find ways to maintain or manage these flaws yeah. not so much get rid of them but just maintain and manage them yeah 
uh, instead of letting them drive entirely because it's yeah. in, it's, it's too primal and it just does not work in our modern society and and not being consumed by those flaws like you know like we were alluding back to knowing yourself is not necessarily accepting every flaw is this is my destiny but um coming to terms with them in a sense that saying okay this is how my brain and body works and come and accept it and not judge or hate or exhaust yourself with that thought don't let it consume you but use it either as a tool or just learn how to navigate around it, right? Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. You just said everything I took me 20 minutes to say. <laughs> <laughs> like one, one second. Yeah, you're fun to yeah. listen to, though. I'm enjoying this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like, but like, I, I will say, you know, because um, I am, I, I have sympathy for, for my fellow artists, right? Yeah. And I, and I, and I think that it's, uh, I think it's become incredibly lazy uh to tell people that they're lazy and yeah. <laughs> that they procrastinate i think that there's better ways to explain that you know what you have is common like i yeah. have it too there's days and weeks and months sometimes where i'm not as productive as i yeah. would like to be yeah. and to say that i am this like perfect being that's always productive that's crazy there's no yeah. way that's true. And non-human. Yeah. 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 And, and I know people that are incredibly productive, yeah. way more productive than myself, people that I would be jealous of. Right. And mm -hmm. I am jealous of, you know, I'm like, man, that person is incredibly way more productive. Mm -hmm. But then I think to myself, but again, it's like, I ask myself that question of like, okay, so I am jealous of this ex artist of like how productive they are and how much better the work they make. Yeah. So now I have a way, few ways to react. Like if this is like a video game, right? Like you have like a little three like dialogue tree thingy. So mm -hmm. the first like first response is kind of a common one, which is like, okay, I I might want to bash them. Like look at their artwork and say, well, why would anyone want to have like that much kind of quality of the work? That's that's just waste of your time and life, it's right? Waste of quality, yeah. Or waste of whatever. <laughs> or like a, 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 a initial reaction can just be very yeah, much yeah. like this. Yeah. And 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 again, that's like I said, it's actually very common. Have yeah. you ever gone to like YouTube comments? Man, it's everywhere. Uh, and yeah. so it's like, get me started. Yeah. So, so then the second reaction could be a, a neutral one, which could be like, like, well, whatever. I don't really care. Yeah. yeah I don't care. I don't care. Like, whatever. Uh, and then the third reaction is, uh, or again, there could be sub reactions within these reactions, but like the third reaction is usually the one that I usually take, uh, where I ask myself a very clear question, which is, is this something that I want to achieve? And if so, what do I need to do yeah. to start to do this? Yeah. Uh, or two, uh, I admire this person's efforts, and I think that they uh, are doing something that's quality. But again, is this something that I want to achieve? And if mm -hmm. not, it's mm -hmm. okay. Then I should then I should go out of my way to applaud this person rather yeah. than um, to the first option, right? Like, so yeah. yes, maybe I don't want to do this type of stuff, but uh -huh. you know what? I recognize that this person is of quality and I should befriend them and let them know or like some in some way let them know that they are appreciated. Yeah. And I see their efforts and I think they're doing great. Yeah. And and then to get back to what I was doing, whatever it was, right? There's nothing wrong with complimenting and being uh, happy for those who found a thing that they really enjoy and are really good at it. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that when you do the, the, the third option that I pose where whether you're like, okay, this – our ex artist does a thing that I really think is dope. Like, mm -hmm. how can I do that? Like, how can I like, okay, what do they, what books did they read? What, what is their schedule? What is the thing? Like the kinds of questions that you see students tend to ask, which are good mm -hmm. questions to ask. <clears throat> but if that is something you don't want to do, like Glenn Keane is one of my favorite like artists because he's one of the best animators that I know of, mm -hmm. but I don't want to animate. I don't no. want to draw in that style, but I admire his like efficiency, his proficiency. Yeah. It's incredibly uh, admirable, and I look yeah. at it, and I'm like, I am in awe of yeah. this person. Yeah. And you know, uh, I saw him at an event, and I went up to him, and I was like, "You're probably one of the greatest animators I've ever met." He probably won't know who I am or remember me, but like, because I was amongst a crowd of other people that were saying like bowing to him. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't like I had an animation portfolio that I wanted in the review. No. It wasn't like I wanted to ask him advice on how to be an animator. Yeah. Uh, in fact, all the things that he said had almost nothing to do with animation. Yeah. And it was super helpful and really great tools to learn. 
Um, and that's my point. It's like, why, like, if that person doesn't do the thing that you want to do, but you can, you could acknowledge their, their, their quality. Why would you not want to be a part of that? Yeah. Even, even if, like I said, like, even if you don't do anything that you, that even you do. Even if it wasn't even art related. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Even if it's not art related, like yeah. it, it's, it's, it's a really good approach because again, the first option of that third, like statement is that like you, you, you would go like, Hey, okay, how did you like, what were the, what were the tools that you think you, you can give me to help me become a better animator? Right. Yeah. Cause I definitely yeah. want to do this. And if that's not the option that you go for, then then do the third uh, or the second part of that, which is like, yeah, approach them and find out how they can keep enriching your life with whatever knowledge that they have uh, that helps you indirectly, you know? Just and, the quality, the, the quality of who they are, right? I mean, you got to think, regardless of whether or not Glenn, let's say Glenn Keane made furniture for a living. He was a, he was an art, he was a, uh, um, he did woodworking or something like that. You can look at somebody at his level of expertise, his level of perfectionism, his level of discipline and skill and and all of that. And you can you can grow a lot professionally just by taking his methodology and his yeah, totally. attitude into account. Regardless, you know, whether he's a painter, an animator or whatever, it's 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 you can respect him for his accomplishment and his personality. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, so ultimately what I'm getting across is that like, yeah, you know, the idea is how do you add to your, to your life and to your, yeah. uh, to your values. Um, and, and then, you know, st try to stay away from, uh, how to create like this, this narrative, like everything else is just garbage unless it's this thing. You yeah. Know, it's, it's just better to like, I always say to people, whenever someone tells me something that I think has a lot of value, or even if it doesn't, uh, I think of it like uh, there's this expression in America, which is like, um, you know, can I give you my two cents? Which is essentially mm -hmm. like, can I give you my advice? Right. Right. And I always think like, yeah, even if it's two cents worth of advice, you know, I'll take it. I'm two cents yeah. richer. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's a hundred dollars worth of advice. Sometimes it's a million dollars worth of advice. Right. Yeah. But even those two cents pieces of advice is like, why, why not take it? And why would you turn it down? Yeah. Yeah, and and I will say that it's also important not to be incredibly naive to the fact that there are things that you should avoid. There are things that you should try to like restrict and to um, to to be more critical, right? Right, and and some cynicalness can be helpful, or rather like skepticalness. <laughs> yeah. But but it shouldn't be the main driver, is what I'm getting at, right? It shouldn't be yeah. like the main purpose. Like when I start to remove things from my life, it's usually because there's a, a consecutive amount of evidence that has been presented to me that has demonstrated that this is definitely something that I've not valued in my life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I, I gave it enough benefit of the, uh, of the doubt to now realize that there is fully doubt, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's smart too. Don't, uh, not everything is rainbows and, and lollipops. Right. No, but like, absolutely not. Yeah. But like, uh, I, I think that if your if your drive is is you know mostly focused on adding uh, versus removing, mm -hmm. um, that you'll find that uh, you, you'll just have a better quality of life in general. And again, for those of you who may have this maybe lopsided already in one direction or the other, uh, again, it's manageable, man. It's it's yeah. totally re reasonable. You you do have to understand that. Um, and then we talked a little bit about this, the social networks and stuff. A yeah. lot of that has been in manipulating us, um, yeah. in, in the worst ways. And, yeah. and you really got to be aware that this is happening. You might not mm -hmm. think that these, these social networks are manipulating you. Mm -hmm. Uh, they absolutely are. They're even like, um, they even are, are aware that this is happening and they're trying yeah. to do a better job, uh, because they don't, they're not evil. They don't want this to happen. No. They just, they just want to sustain just want a successful their, business. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, but they also, luckily for us, at least some of the bigger ones, right. Are, are, have some ethical standards Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and at least the employees within these companies are recognizing like there's yeah. some flaws and, and they're doing something about it. And so, um, and like I said, at least some of them, not all, yeah. like there's, there's some really massive, uh, corporate entities that kind of could care less.
No, uh, yeah. I think some of them are like are in China, right? I think some of like the online platforms on China are really like censorship is like like their bread and butter. Yeah, uh, like suppressing yeah. any kind of voice that has any kind of con- you know conflict to the, yeah. the overall governmental narrative. Yeah. It's pretty aggressive. Yeah, um, and so they they do exist, and yeah. it's just the product of like you know large entities in general. But my point is is that like yeah you 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 might feel that you have control over your uh, your you know moral compass and your your actual objective thinking but uh again we're animals and we're easily persuaded right like if you ever watched a commercial about a thing and then immediately bought that thing mm-hmm. uh, that has demonstrated that you are <laughs> you are you're very much not in control right yeah yeah like that is literally what the plan was all along for these these platforms is like to like, get you to I, buy something you never even dude, thought about two seconds ago. Yeah, yeah, dude, and I'm not saying that I'm immune to this. I'm saying I'm part of this too, man. Like oh, yeah. I literally bought like beard cream. Like I was like scrolling <laughs> oh, through Facebook, shit. and it was like, "Yo, beard cream, it's dope." Beard and cream, like, really? Oh, I've never had beard problems. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "Dude, I need it, man." And I got it. And I was like, "I didn't, need, I didn't need this." <laughs> I'm sure it feels. I'm sure it smells great. Yes, <laughs> No, it's not that great either. And it's like oh, my wife hates it. And I'm just like, why did I get this? And I was like, oh, man, it got me, dude. Facebook got me. And it, and it, it, I'm trying to say like this <laughs> happens, man. Like, it really does, dude. Yeah. And so so you have to be aware of this. You have to like manage your social networks. Like yeah. it's it's going to be a thing that you're going to have to do to help you get in this right state of mind. Stop yeah. watching. Uh, uh, I, I, my recommendation is if you watch a YouTube channel, or you follow a, a, a bunch of people uh, on YouTube, and all they do is like ninety percent of the time, all they do is complain about yeah. stuff. And yeah. I don't care what it is; it could be about anything. It could be about political. It could be about video games, whatever. Yeah. But all they ever do is like bring you bad news. Yeah. That is manipulating you to think that everything is bad. Oh okay? yeah, big time. Yeah. Uh, there is just as much like positive stuff out there to yeah. listen to that will change. Uh, your perspectives. There's some stuff that are neutral. Like I like to listen to like there's a, a channel that I've been watching. It's called What If, and it just takes like I've ideas. I've been watching that all week. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Like it's just like what if there was two Earths in our solar system? Again, yeah. it's like it's neutral. It has nothing to do with anything other than like this cool idea of it's like just two Earths. Expanding Earth. your knowledge of things. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, so it's I recommend. Yeah. Yeah, I recommend like trying to fill your feed with this type of information because yeah. it's it's going to make you a better concept artist and it's going to put you in a better mood most of the time. That's you know? so big. Think about yeah, what you're 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 alluding to something really big there, and I find that for me, not only like as a YouTuber, as a dad, as a teacher, as an artist, content that helps you grow. You know, like YouTube channels, Veritasium, Vsauce, What If, uh, you know, all these different yeah, things that they talk about. Ones. Or anything, even if it's talking about like some, you know, some of the, the, the creepy pasta channels that talk about different lore, you're, exp- you're learning about some new stuff. But yet, like you said, if uh, like at my gym, they have CNN on every single screen, you know, and I, I can't even look at it. I can't, even, I can't even look up at the screen because it's just the same negative draining bullshit every single day. And that really you get sucked into that crap really quickly. Yeah. And I just, yeah, I, I can't, I can't be bothered for two seconds to know what's happening in politics. Honest to God, I really can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, just to, not to, yeah. yeah, not to get too much into the politics. Kind of, that's always a, a point of con- contention. Rock. Is that like, <laughs> rock? Yeah, like I, um, I, I used to watch uh, TYT, which is a, a very progressive Turks, and liberal, yeah, yeah, yeah. liberal leaning um, thing, and I used to just watch them mostly. And I realized that that's what was happening. So then I started listening to uh, people on the other side, like people like Ben Shapiro, yeah, uh, Stephen Crowder, these people. So I, I had like a balance of like both things, and there would be the other people on the left that I would listen to. Um, again, and it was like this constant like listening to the both sides type of thing. And I was yeah. doing that deliberately so that way I can kind of have a because the truth is somewhere in the middle, right? Yeah. yeah. And and then I realized though ultimately. Uh, although I was a fan of some of like what they were saying and some of what they weren't saying on and both sides, right? Yeah. Ultimately, both of these platforms were just complaining about yeah everything. Yep. And I was like, I don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I there's a couple real political issues that I have like a really strong opinion about, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Yep. But most of those other stuff that they're talking about, like there's like nitpicking this and that. I'm like, I, I don't really care, you know? Yeah. And and I think most people don't actually. Most people generally only care about like some of the larger issues. And yeah. that's all I really care about. And yeah. and so I did realize I should just stop like listening to these folks and just like go and read like actual like papers and documents on these subjects, do my own research. Rather than just like listen to other people's opinions based off of this okay, stuff. Well, Anthony, I'm going to jump in there because there's, I want to touch on one thing before before we close up, but okay, cool. uh, it, and that is it kind of has to do with one of the subjects I wanted to talk about, but I think we can we have a more we have a better platform for that right now, and that is creating your own ecosystem. Right. Like the world is full of groups, little ecosystems, this political ecosystem, that political ecosystem, this artistic ecosystem, that one, this job mm -hmm. network, that job network. And in both of our cases, we've both started our own thing. Right. I have Lucid Pixel. Mm -hmm. You have Robot Pencil. And we started our own schools, our own mentorships, our own YouTube channels. And that's a very specific direction to take as an artist where a lot of artists thrive, for instance, to work in a studio and pursue studio work where mm -hmm. other people might not thrive in studio work. They might suck at studio work, but thrive amazingly on their own. Some people who have the benefit of being able to be good at both. But um, we were, when we were talking earlier about motivation or, you know, pushing yourself through certain difficult periods in order to find that growth so that we don't, we don't accrue too much debt Sometimes you just can't keep pushing. Sometimes you just can't keep go. You just feel like you're wasting your damn time and you have no idea where the, what the end goal is. And that might be because the end goal, what you're supposedly pushing towards isn't clear to you. And I found in my career at a certain point, I just couldn't justify my actions through effort alone. And I needed to do something different. I either a didn't necessarily believe in the institutions that I was representing, or b I just was tired of fueling somebody else's desires, and I wanted to kind of voice. I wanted to express my own voice as a professional, as a teacher, as an artist. So I decided to take it off in my own direction, and that's where my whole desire to start an online school came from, to formulate my own ecosystem. And despite, and I'm sure you can you can attest to this too, that I people say you know freelances you get so much free time off when you're freelancing, or is it so much easier than studio studio work? It's the opposite. I would say I put in double or triple the hours than I did when I was ever working in a studio, but I feel like it's far less effort because everything has purpose to me. Everything that I dedicate myself towards, to me, has a personal value, and I feel a personal benefit from doing that. And that's where I feel this particular choice, this life choice that I made for myself is really where I feel I belong. And I don't know if you feel this too. Uh, like if you compare your, your, the business that you developed with Robot Pencil versus working in a studio, what was your incentive for doing that? What pulled you in that direction? I'm very curious to know about that. Yeah, so um, I, I decided to build my own uh, platform uh, from leaving like a studio environment mainly because I just wanted to be closer to my, my family. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause uh, again, you know, we talked a lot about being like, like this, we're this human animal. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, if you, again, I always think about that because if you get just to kind of the root of what we are, like for instance, we, we as humans look at other animals and we observe their behaviors and their patterns yep. and their, their ecosystem in which they live in. Yeah. Um, we get real focused on like genetic differences and all this stuff when it comes mm -hmm. to other animals. But then whenever it comes to, um, humans, uh, any of the, like, especially when he talks about like genetic differences, it's incredibly yeah. taboo. Right. But, yeah. but even like on the more or less taboo stuff, like just thinking of us as just a, an animal in general, Right. right um people get real like arrogant of like this idea yeah. that we're better than other animals we're not like them mm -hmm. and the reality is like no we definitely are like <laughs> our cousins you know yeah. uh, it's just that we had one gene that made us a little bit different uh and that that not that was enough 
that allowed us to exponentially grow our technology and our societies and our cultures, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and exponentially. And yeah. but our, our physiological bodies are pretty much the same as they were like hundreds of thousands of years ago. It's yeah. like really not much has changed. The big and, evolution and, happened a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Evolution takes a long time for like yeah. real big changes. Yeah. Uh, and so, but our technology doesn't need a long time. In fact, like the last hundred years, is a is a great example of like how rapidly technology has grown, yeah. And and a hundred years is not a long time in the scale of evolution, right? Mm -hmm. So so like there's some real. Uh, I mean, even if we just go five hundred years, like which is still not like in the timeline of like, you know, uh, like evolution. That's still like just like nothing, you know. That's yeah. like not even like a second on a clock. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so. So it's like, I, I think about this stuff a lot. So I think about, like, is it natural for, uh, you know, a paternal, like the, the, like one part of a family unit to be gone for more than like, like 80% of daylight, basically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, it, like away from the, the very things and people that they care about. Right. Yeah. Um, is that natural? Yeah. And uh, the answer is obviously hell no, right? Yeah. And so, and again, some things are natural that could be terrible, like arsenic's natural. So I'm not I'm advocating you should go drink some arsenic. But I'm just saying that, like, this is a very intuitive, like, okay, yeah, I think it makes more sense to me to be around my family, like, yeah. for my kids to see me and me to see them like, yep. more often, right? And then I also uh, thought, like, okay, what what else? Like, is it, like, better for a human like myself to be in front of a, mach like a sh machine, like a screen for several hours? Again, yeah. for, like, 80% of the daylight in the day. Again, uh, this is not ideal. Right. And then, uh, like, uh, some other things. Like, I have a standing desk, for instance. I've been standing this whole time. I'm going to get one, too, yeah. It's, it's yeah, shitty. again, it's like, should we be sitting for, again, like, 80% of daylight, yeah. right? Uh, again, these these questions become very obvious once you put them out there. And then going back to the whole, is it a, like is it worth doing? Like, is it a challenge? Like, yeah, of course, it's a challenge to transition to all of this stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, but I I recognize that that's what I wanted, yeah. and so I made that effort. And yeah. so so when I left the studio environment, it was more so that I was doing it for the betterment of my health. Yeah. And and my my social health too, like yeah. my family. Yeah. Um, I overcorrected, right? So, like, I also recognize that it's very important to have people outside of your uh, your immediate family, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it goes back to this idea of, like, you know, as humans, yes, we were, like, a, a tribal-type society, but we had multiple families within that tribe that you can go visit. It was like a village raises a child type of idea, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, making efforts to to make friends with other parents, uh, making friends outside of this. I've thought about, like, joining a different kind of hobby, like uh, maybe rock climbing or maybe jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Like some yeah. other thing that I don't need to make money from. I just, yeah. in fact, the opposite is true. I'm going to spend money to do it, you know? Yeah. And, and again, for the social aspect, making friends, meeting people, keeping that social health high. Because that's yeah. what, as humans, we, we kind of need to do. We absolutely and, have to. In yeah. real in real life is more valuable than uh, on on any kind of digital platform. Digital platforms are great to arrange those real life interactions, right? Yeah. But but not so much to only be engaged there. And so, anyways, getting back to this this point of like why I left is mainly because of that. Because if you were to ask me, what do I prefer? Like if I were to 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 pick um, what I prefer, was it would it be studio work or freelance work? Like, would I do I prefer living uh, or working from home or working in a, in, in, a, in a more loose environment, right, mm -hmm. where I can take a nap in the middle of the day? It's no big deal, yeah. right? Or where I'm in like an office with other people who are working and we just do stuff, right? I actually do prefer the studio environment. Really? Huh. Yeah. Okay. But the 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 question wasn't rather like, do is that better for me or or the question wasn't. Uh, for me, it wasn't prefer. rather, yeah, what, what, what do I prefer? The question was, what's better for me? Yeah. Right? And it's like, you know, uh, uh, to use my kids as an example, it's like, yeah, my kids would prefer to eat candy and drink soda 
but that's obviously not better for them. Yeah. Right. So it's like, yeah, I would prefer to just not work at all yeah. and just do whatever the hell I wanted. Right. Um, but that's not better for me, especially yeah. in this modern society. Right. Yeah. Like in the circumstances I live in, this is just not how it works. And so, um, like I would prefer to just do podcasts all day with no yeah. worry of income coming in. Like I would love to just talk with people and hang out and do all yeah. kinds of cool stuff, you know, with no fear of, of, uh, any kind of ramifications, but that's not the world we live in. Yeah. Or at least that's not the world I live in. Yeah. And so, so I always think what's best for me because it's a, it's a hard choices will, will make your life easier later. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you do them now and then easy choices that you do now will make your life harder later. Right. It's that yeah. kind of premise. And it's just, it's panned out mostly to be true for me. And so, so the main reason why I didn't like working at the studio or I left the studio, I mean, was because of those reasons. Hmm. And I, I will, I will expand on why I like the studio environment, uh, and why like the pros and cons of both for my, myself. So yeah. the pros of a studio environment is I'm constantly surrounded by other creatives. Like yeah. I like to talk. I like to hang out with other people. I like to bounce ideas off of something other than my own mind, right? Yeah. Like having someone hear my idea or hearing or seeing my artwork live in person often is much more valued to me uh, as a creative. And I feel way more productive when, I do, when I'm in those circumstances yeah. than when I'm at home, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the advantage is obviously from working from home is that I can take naps whenever I can hang out with my kids. I can literally just go outside and play with them whenever I want. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, they can come in they can see me, give me hugs, you know, when I'm working, yeah. I can come out and just lay down. I can watch a show or something in the middle of the day yeah. with no fear of consequence. Uh, I can use any extra time in the middle of my day to do my own stuff. And mm -hmm. then maybe at night I can work on freelance, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's that, that fluidity is really nice. Yeah. Um, the, the cons of like, uh, the studio environment is that it's incredibly rigid. Mm -hmm. Um, it is really hard to balance a, a life, especially in our industry. Yeah. Right. When you have that. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, for me in terms of freelance, it's hard to just be your own manager, your own boss. Yeah. Uh, that is something that I had to learn how to do in the last like few years. I've gotten better at it, but at the beginning yeah. I was really bad at it. Mm -hmm. Um, I was really bad at it, you know, and, but now I've like learned how to keep myself accountable uh, yeah. a little bit better these days. I've also taught myself how to bounce ideas off of somebody, even yeah. though there's nobody there. Like, and the best way to do that is just to message people <laughs> and be like, Hey, yeah. you know, can I call you? And like, we can talk, you know? Yeah. And, and so there's, I, instead of thinking, thinking like making it super binary, uh, I'm trying to find that perfect middle, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I've even considered like, you know, maybe every other day, like renting a studio space for like, a, like you know, I think you could do like for $30. Yeah, uh, I'm looking at doing or something that like myself this. too. Yeah. Yeah. Just just so I can just like have a house. little bit of both. Yeah. And so yeah. It's, it's, it's possible. Like I said, it doesn't have to be binary, like freelance or no. Yeah. Um, but but if you can understand the things you like about freelance and the things you like about studio, you can try to find the, the, the one that fits right in the middle. Yeah. And and there's always going to be a sacrifice somewhere, and it's just the question is whether the sacrifice is worth sacrificing. Yeah. Um, if it's not, then then uh, then just readjust. So, for yeah. instance, for me, the sacrifice can never be to get away from the the very people I love. Right. Yeah. That that is why I ultimately um, left that world. Uh, I even left Sony to move or work closer to home when my daughter was born. Because okay. I, I didn't like the idea that I was two hours away from my home, even though Same Sony here, Santa yeah. Monica, yeah. even though Sony Santa Monica was probably one of the greatest studios I've ever worked at. But yeah. again, it was like, am I Is it worth sacrificing the? Because we couldn't move to Santa Monica either, because yeah. the schools in Irvine were really what we'd prefer. And so it's like, um, is it worth to move up here, or is it worth to just find another job closer? Yeah. Um, and so the, the job closer was ultimately the, the solution, yeah. you know? And then when my family kept on getting bigger and my wife would talk to me about like how our, our kids have grown and talk about this one time when they were like really young and mm -hmm. I don't remember that. And she's like, well, yeah, you were, you were working. 
you know, that, that hit me hard, you know, I, was mm-hmm. like, I don't like, why am I working? You know, I asked yeah. myself that question. How long <laughs> you did know, you do like, that for? How long were you working at Sony for during like after for about like a year and a half, almost two years. Really? And, okay. And, yeah. And then I was like, yeah, I, I need to stop because I was commuting every day for like two hours uh, there and two hours well, back. You did that every four day. Hours. Yeah. Oh, four gosh, hours. Yeah. Well, every work day. Right. And yeah. so, so yeah, I decided now nah, this is not for me. Yeah. Uh, specifically being so far, not the working there. Working there was great. I love yeah. it. Um, I think Sony Santa Monica is a great studio. It's funny. I had uh, exactly the same experience with uh, with Disney. The only thing was that um, I wasn't. I was actually gone five days of the week, five and a half days of the week, which was really rough when my son was born. And I lasted six months. I couldn't get past <laughs> six months. At that point, I was just, I can't do it. I can't do it. You know, that was, it was too rough. And it wasn't, it's funny because you came from family first to start the idea. That was kind of, I knew I didn't want to travel. I knew I didn't want to be away from my family anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted, but I, at the same time, it was kind of, I was at a point in my life where I was ready to start building my own thing. So that's when I started, uh, I started the whole Lucid Pixel thing. But it's it's kind of surprising that we both kind of have a very similar story in that regard. It's uh, It was a family-motivated uh, decision. Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. Well, listen, I actually, believe it or not, I want, I have about 16 questions I wrote down, like stuff I wanted to talk about. But <laughs> I actually have a stu- I have to be with a student in about 10 minutes. But Yeah, I had to damn, roll out too. Damn, that was, that was, I, I'm just sitting here buzzing right now. It's, this, is so, this is such a good, thank you so much, Anthony. Honestly, this was no, so, thanks for so awesome. Me. And I definitely, you know, if you if you will permit me, I will definitely have to bother you for your time again because this was a lot of fun. Um, no, you're too I, formal for me, man. Oh, <laughs> permit? No. Yeah, you're permitted. <laughs> if you would permit me. But um, yeah, no, but listen, I, I want to just, before I let you guys go, I want to remind you, um, of course, I don't. If you if you follow my channel, then you know Anthony Jones's channel really well. But regardless, Robot Pencil, I'll write it down on the screen. You can go and check it out. I'll also have it in the link below. Uh, not only his YouTube channel, but he also has a school, a mentorship himself. So you can go and check that out. I'll I'll, I'll ask Anthony after for for all the info, and I'll link it in the description. And is there anything else? Was there anything else you wanted me to to remind everybody of since they're listening? Uh. Yeah, I, I think that my favorite tagline would be something along the lines of um, "Talent is earned; it's not given." Mm. So, so take that with you guys. Challenge is earned; it's not given. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna. Yeah, th- yeah, I'm, gonna yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> Next I'm time gonna we have a podcast, we can... on that one today. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, Anthony, listen, I love you to death. This was a lot of fun. And uh, and please rest assured you're invited back any time you want. All right. Yeah, actually, I think we're gonna do another one of these things. Um, yeah. Uh, probably on my thing. We, we we can always like do it live on yours and mine at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think it matters. But yeah. anyway, anyway, yeah. Regardless, yeah, we'll we'll see you guys soon for sure. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. Take care.